what you did, you little jerk! What's going on, everybody? We're back again for another episode of the Circle of Jerks podcast. Uh, we got a great episode today. We got a new special, a new guest, new special guest. Uh, you know, we're going to be talking all things horror today with uh, our good friend John uh, from, uh, he uh, ha- uh, is part of a uh, podcast trio, A Cut Above. Uh, one of the, definitely the best horror podcast is the only one I listen to. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to talk, uh, you know, talk about his podcast, talk about what he does, talk about horror movies, and we're going to review one of the greatest ones I've seen, Henry, A Portrait of a Serial Killer, uh, from 1986, starring Michael Rooker. Yeah, yeah, this one is a good one. And guys, thank you so much for having me on. I got to meet you guys a couple of months ago, and I've been looking forward to this one. Oh, yeah, same here. Absolutely, John, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with us, we got uh, we got Andy as always. You know uh, my uh, my trusty uh, partner uh, for the Circle of Jerks podcast. Right, I'm, the, I'm the Cato to his uh, Green Hornet. <laughs> that, that's I say that as always. You know. <laughs> yeah. Beat you to the punch. Uh, you know I'm yeah. I'm quick. I'm quick. You got to keep up with me, John. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and especially because we are doing a, you know, kind of a horror theme today, I did wear my Frankenstein t-shirt, so, you know, it's like, I, I, I'm, I'm prepared. Well, shit, I should have worn my Halloween t-shirt, I'm wearing my Bullet Club t-shirt. Oh, all right. Look well, it works, it you know, has skull, skull and uh, crossbones, and you know, it well, works. It, that's machine guns, by the way. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes, yeah, so I dressed like a, I dressed like a true CEO killer, uh, just looking like everybody else. <laughs> that's that's right. <laughs> exactly. I look like everybody else. Like, like, a, like a true Heart? psychopath. Uh, like a beige Carhartt, like Henry does. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because it's not a Carhartt, but I do have a beige uh, Dickies like that's thick right. like outdoors like, jacket. Oh it's the same thing. It's yeah. The same thing. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's it, for, for all intents and purposes it's the same thing. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, John. Thank you for coming on. I know I know you're a busy dude, so uh, you know it's it's nice to have you. Hey guys, I'm always willing to talk to you, and especially talk about horror movies. So absolutely, thank you for having me. I, I knew that would get you on if I it was like, well, you know, we'll, we'll do a horror film if you want to <laughs> if you want to come on. If you said the Notebook, I'd say fuck you guys. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think Andy would say fuck you. We're done with this. <laughs> I know I don't uh, you know I don't object very often, but uh, I don't know. know, There's you know it's like it it was us. I mean there uh, we I mean we do pretty much anything here. I mean we we've we've done uh, uh, you know uh, was it Maltese the Maltese Falcon? We've done you know uh, our last live stream that we did as of this recording. We did um, what should we call? What did we do? what the hell was the movie that we just did? I gotta say is that your guys' uh, podcast of the Blues Brothers with Robert, your your dad, yeah, that was a lot of fun to listen to and watch. Really, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, uh, you know, my dad was worried because he's like, he's like, Dude, I forgot my notes. I'm I I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. so I was like, yeah, it's okay. Like, we've had him on a few times. Like, uh, yeah, anything. Anything car related, uh, you know, car related movies. We did like American Graffiti. Uh, we did uh, Easy Rider. Um, you know, we, uh, which we all we did uh, Bullet and uh, the French Connection. So yeah, we we we're all over the place. We'll do anything. We've done a, a ton of like foreign films. I, I I love a good samurai film, so I'm always trying to inject those uh, <laughs> into uh, into uh, a review. I gotta tell you that, that that my girlfriend is actually Korean, uh, uh, Andrew, mm-hmm. um, Robert. Um, I've got oh, really? into those yeah, shows. I, I, I had no idea. Oh, you got into uh, you got you got the K drama. Uh, you know. Yeah, I, I did, but actually, before I met her, um, I actually <laughs> was really into Korean horror movies. The way they're Lee. really freaking good. They're really good. Um. Train to Busan, man. One of my favorite. Uh, I still haven't uh, seen I that. I, 
I'd also recommend Memories of Murder is really good. Uh, Mother is very good. I've heard of that. But, Mother but... is fucking great. Oh, it's so good. Um, is Taylor Two Sisters screen or is that your yeah, yeah, Taylor Two Sisters. I haven't seen it yet. I I might have. We might have to bring you on to do that. You know, I just because uh, that's a been a movie that's been on my list for a while. And uh, yeah, I, that that'll be a great episode if we do that. But yeah, no, the 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 Korean and Japanese horror stuff is really freaking good. And you know, kind of when we were setting up for this episode, I was like, well, let me. I, I started to really dive into the horror genre because it, it's not one that I'm super familiar with. And I and I I do like classic horror. Like you know, I grew up watching stuff like the Universal monster films. You know, a lot of the, the silent era of uh, horror films like Nosferatu, Cabin of Dr. Caligari, um, uh, Phantom of the Opera, you know, with uh, Lon Chaney. You know, th- that, that's the stuff that I grew up with. That's, you know, what my grandfather showed me, like, you know, many years ago. And I, I love those films. But then when it came to, like, stuff like, you know, the, you know Nightmare on Elm Street and, uh, you know, Halloween, in which I, I've watched those, but... Those didn't quite capture my imagination as much. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. I'm sorry. You said I, I, no, at the time, <laughs> I was like, I was six when I first watched these. So was but, I. I. But I, but I've come back and I was like, you know what? The, the especially the originals of these series, like with Halloween, all that stuff. It's like they're it's it's good, and I I you know now you know with like this current um, era of horror, like you know I, I just watched Midsummer. I was like, this is. This is not just like a good horror film. This is a great film just by itself. This is a, this should be. This is an all-time classic. You know. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, it's. Uh, so I'm actually excited to hear about how. How did horror start for you? Like, what what was it that like really? Wow, th- like. Movies are awesome. Like, how did how did that start for you? Actually, you brought up Halloween. Uh, I was a kid and. I don't, I don't know how long it's been going on, but it's like they always put uh, Halloween on basic cable around Halloween time. And yeah. the first time I ever saw that movie, it was it scared the living shit out of me. And I remember vividly of watching this movie. Oh. <laughs> and it, it, I don't know if you guys remember the, the little uh, TVs with the VCR thing in them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah maybe 10 inch TVs and I, I, I put my blanket over it and I'm sitting here watching this movie as a, as a little uh, wax cable is in the back of it. And I'm watching this thing during my bedtime of when I should be sleeping. And it scared the shit out of me. And I went to my parents' room. I remember waking up uh, the next morning saying, you know what? I love that. I love the exhilaration of being scared. I don't know if it was just Michael Myers. I don't know if it was the score. I mean, the, it, oh, I'm sure we talk about the score. One of the greatest scores of all time. It's so good. Absolutely. It was so simple. It was a dun 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 dun. You know, on a on a synthesizer or, or you know keyboard or wherever it was, that it's just it resonated with me. And then ever since then, I've never really gotten scared of horror movies, but I've always been enthralled with. I know the movie that did that scared the shit out of me, like uh, The Exorcist. That's, That's the movie that, like, when I, because I, I watched that, oh, yeah. five when I watched that, which is like, no five year old should be watching the fucking no. movie. Oh, well. Yeah. And I mean, that, I, uh, my parents, my, you know, I had a steady stream of really bad babysitters. Um, <laughs> na- namely, uh, namely my uh, older cousin, like, older guy cousin. So I was exposed to like, a whole mess of shit that uh, I probably shouldn't have been exposed to as a small child, but. I'm, I'm curious, curious Andy, is that, that, that did, did you grow, grow up religious in, in Robert E. Too? Uh, no, I did not grow up in a uh, in a religious household. Uh, you know, I, I, I found it later in life, but like it was more like I did not grow up in a uh, in a Christian household. And, and so as long as it wasn't like gratuitous sex in a movie, my parents like because they, my parents knew like they know like I know like uh, reality from fiction and all that stuff. Sure. And it's like, yeah, yeah you know, you're, you're gonna, gonna hear these words. words you're gonna like, like just don't repeat them. And you know, violence and cursing, they didn't care. That that, that was, was the thing with me. me. And again, yeah, you you didn't grow up in a religious household, or did you? Yeah, uh, more or less. My uh, my mom, 
she definitely was a believer, uh, and my dad eventually came to the faith, uh, you know, and I in turn, uh, you know, did find faith, uh, you know, early in my, you know, early in my adolescence. Uh, but, uh, you know, when I was a, when I was a very young child, like, yeah, you could, like, you, you know, you, there was no amount of candy or, you know, or trips to Chuck E. Cheese that could get me to church. <laughs> no, that's true. I, I only bring, bring that up because you brought up The Exorcist, but there's also movies like The Omen, where <laughs> my parents actually draw the line, and, and my parents were not religious at all, but it was like one of those things where it was so taboo when, uh, you know, Exorcist came out uh, before I was even born. So, like, to them, it was such a taboo topic that, that it's like, don't watch that, but okay, there's this guy in this William Shatner painted face mask, and that's fine. You know, <laughs> or a hockey mask or whatever. Well, yeah, you, you generally, you don't mess with the devil. That's, yeah, that's right. So you don't it, mess it, with like, You don't even, like, tempt those things. Yeah, like, I, and I think maybe that's what it was so scary about The Exorcist for me. It's just like, ooh, crap. Like, that's, it just, yeah, and, and The Omen, too, is really fucking scary. Like, and it, it I Wait, think is that the one about the Antichrist? Yeah, well, I mean, it has Gregory Peck in it, which is one of the greatest actors of all time. And mm-hmm. it's just like, because then that's why I watched it. It's like, oh, I like Gregory Peck. I've seen it in, like, The Gunfighter and, like, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. It's, like, one of my favorite actors. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to watch The Omen. Oh, my God, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Uh, yeah, and but yeah, I watched those probably way too young, uh, you know, and it scared the shit out of me. But I was like, but they were good movies, and but so your your Halloween is the one that captured you, and like you were never the same ever, ever since. I, it just made me a horror movie fan. It was like his. I'll, I'll say something personally about me is I hate heights, but I lived in Washington State for a couple couple of years, I went to the <laughs> Space Needle, and I was nervous, but I was able to enjoy it. So it's like always wanting to get over your fears. And you know, horror movies, actually, that, that was my first connection to get over your fears. You don't have to go run in bed with mom and dad because you're scared of a guy that's painted like William Shatner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I never, I never did like the... Um, you know, like uh, running, you know, I, I would be like, oh crap, that's scary. Like, you know, I cover my eyes or whatever, but I, I never did the, like, where I had like nightmares or stuff like that. Thank God. But <laughs> yeah, there's so I, many movies that I watched as a kid. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I never covered my eyes. I wanted to see everything. I was like, oh, that. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you know, speaking of horror, so uh, Halloween got you started. Uh, what are what would you do you have like a maybe like a top five like horror movies that like you know, you're always constantly going back to that you you know that are your favorites oh god I was actually thinking about this um I guess it depends on what subgenre you like um I would actually say if you want the ultimate slasher for me um it's not controversial it is Halloween go check it out you have to if you're oh, starting, yeah. if you're starting in horror go do that um actually say that if you wanted more of a uh you know kind of ease into horror or horror adjacent like psychological thriller silence of the lambs oh yeah that's a great film it it it's it's heavy but i mean there's that that got it's got that kind of hollywood flavor to it and you guys would know because you're out there. Oh, well, and now it now that the great thing that that film swept the Oscars. Like it won uh, all the categories it was nominated for. It won. Yes, it, it did. Best picture, best actor, best supporting. Yeah, you know, all all that, all those, all those. Uh... Yeah, all those superlatives. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see what, what, what zombie movies. Oh, jeez, zombie! I would actually go. Uh... Night of the Living Dead, 1969. Oh, yeah, that, that's... that. I mean, Train to Busan, like, comes close, but I think that is the best zombie. Yeah, it's it's not my top ten, or even top five, but you've got to appreciate that movie 
so much. Uh, it's just what it did for the subgenre of zombie movies. So where were we at? Three? That, that was three? That's three, right, yeah. Mm, aesthetically, like if you're going for an aesthetic scare, a movie that holds up forever is... 1974's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, yeah, I need to revisit that, actually. I, I haven't seen it probably since I was, like, like eight. <laughs> so it's been a while. <laughs> Not over, overly gory, but it just makes you feel dirty. Kind of like the movie. We talked about it's unsettling. Time. It is. Big time. Uh, let's see. One more. Uh, Paranormal. Oh, the, um, is that the one, like, where with... Uh, like paranormal activity like or is is that the one i was actually going there um yeah like, like the movies with ghosts like a ghost sub genre or like a supernatural feel to it uh i, I, I had a way like the og uh blair witch project but i'm like a paranormal activity because it, it was right here like uh, you know, a couple miles from where I'm living right now here in San Diego, but it was just like, like what they did with a found footage sub sub genre and paranormal. It was really good. And it's still effective. It still holds up. It's still. It's yeah. Up. Yeah. So, you know, I was also trying to think of like, because I was like, okay, well, I, there's definitely a lot of horror adjacent films that I really like. Um, but I was seeing like you know one uh, uh, Alien is one that I really I I really like that movie a lot. Um, Chef's Kiss. And, and then you know the the great thing is like the sequel Aliens like how you switch it from a sci-fi horror film to a, like an action adventure like like I I would say it's more of an action adventure uh, action adventure horror. It's like it's like how how they in like two different directors. And it's just, but the story is cohesive. Like they they pair up so well. Um, I love that. Uh, Bone Tomahawk has uh, become one of my absolute favorites. Uh, you know, I, I love westerns, and it's like, oh, there's a western horror, and it was like, it has Kurt it's a cannibal movie. It's a cannibal movie. Yeah, that's right. Cool, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, we actually did a review on Bone Tomahawk, and uh, yeah, that, that was that was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that director too, Craig Zoller. He he does some good stuff. Well, I uh, I, I, I think that um, um, what's his name? Oh man, I <laughs> just drew a blank. Um, Kurt Russell is uh, an American gem. Oh, <laughs> like he, I, you know, oh yeah, no no question about it. Well, and you know, sticking with Kurt Russell, I love the thing. You know that's that's another great one, uh, and I, you know normally I hate remakes, but that's one of the greatest remakes ever. No, I, I I'm sorry, I disagree with that. It was just like like for me, it was like, okay, you find out it it was a prequel at the end, but the the movie kind of slogged along for me. But I agree. I think if you're going into the sci-fi horror subgenre, the thing is the way to go. I'm sorry, oh, yeah. Alien, but, Alien, the- Alien is fantastic, but the thing is the way to go. Oh, oh okay. I would, and then uh, you know me. I, I, obviously, I love like you know the Universal monster movie. I, I think I like monster movies. Like I, I've I've kind of noticed that about myself. You know, if it has a monster in it, I, I'm there. Uh, so you know, obviously, I love I love Frankenstein. You know, with Boris Karloff. You know, the, and it just has a lot of that. You know, acting without speaking. Uh, you know, there it's even though it is a talkie. At, you know, one of the early sound films but it's just damn he's so good um and and then uh <clears throat> recently i just watched midsummer and midsummer was just so fucking good <laughs> you know, I, I, I love it um and it i i think i like it too because you know sometimes where you know there's a lot of fantastical stuff where it's like okay it's it's not real, so but like this is something that could potentially happen. You know, this is this is it felt like a real scenario to me. Andy, have you seen this? Uh, Midsummer. Yes. Uh, Midsummer. No. Uh, I actually uh, heard some conflicting. I got I heard conflicting things about it, so you know I kind of like you know push you know push push it down on my queue. Uh, I would. Ask- I would recommend that you be in a good headspace to watch that movie because 
It's fucked up. Ari okay. Aster. Ari Aster has been through some shit. Ah. Uh, he did a YouTube movie, which is 30 minutes long, and I highly recommend both of you guys watch it. It's called There's Something About the Jacksons. Okay. And it's the most fucked up. Thing. It, it, it's almost like the, this dude has suffered trauma that we've all suffered through all at once. <laughs> I mean, it, in his movies, his shorts... He is, um, he wasn't well. I'm sure he's well now because, like, he's looking at his bank account going, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah, since, yeah, I mean, since now, you know, Robert, and now you, John, have uh, recommended it. Yeah, I'll, I'll push it up on the queue. Yeah, sure. I, I highly recommend it, Andy. It's, it, like I said, uh, similar to, like, how, like, Bone Tomahawk is, like, uh-huh. this, this feels like something, this actually could have, you know, been a real occurrence. Like, it, I, I feel like it could have happened if it, mm-hmm. you know, even though it's it's in a movie, it's, uh, and yeah, Ari Aster, like, yeah, that's a guy who's definitely gone through a lot of, you know, it, he, he has a fucked up mind, you know, and, like, this was, he did this movie, like, at, he was going through a breakup, and mm-hmm. that definitely shows in this film. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, like, yeah, the little bit I do know about Midsummer, there is that kind of ask that element to it right where it's like this couple and like it they're on the brinks of uh, breaking up but then they decide to go on a trip um, well and, and the reason that they don't break up is because there's something tragic you know there's right so yeah like uh, happened to a girl and he's like fuck you know it's like right yeah yeah so he can't break up with her because he can't be that you know that kind of a dick exactly right i, I thought that too i thought it, it was like you know the guy that that Maybe he's going through his own shit, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, his his girlfriend or significant other is going through even worse shit. How how much of a big uh, piece of shit are you going to be if you break up with this person? Yeah, yeah, uh, and that uh, you know that's yeah, that's just tough. It's just that that I know. no 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 no. I mean, no no decent guy wants to be that kind of a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Well, whatever relationship you're in, I mean, yeah, because it, and it's just like like your significant other is going through worse shit than you're going through. You're gonna be that asshole that goes, "Fuck you, I'm out." <laughs> I mean, deal with it on your own. I, you, cause you, you know, yeah, it's hard to think about. Hard to think yeah. about. But uh, yeah, no, Andy, you gotta watch it. You, uh, right. I think you're gonna love it. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah don't, move it up the queue. Watch it, like, if you're like in a in like a uh, a bad mood or like depressed. <laughs> a lot of foresh- Andy, a lot of foreshadowing in this movie. Okay. Uh oh, dude, that the whole movie like is telegraphed. <laughs> I, 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 it, you know what it is. It, like he does not hide a goddamn thing. I'm <laughs> not spoiling anything. Okay. A lot of foreshadowing in this movie. Yeah. All right. So, um, so it's fairly warm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And look at the background a lot. A lot. Oh yeah, that, this is one of those like you know, uh, like show secret like meanings and like the little sw- like swirls on like you know. This is definitely a show don't tell film. Andy, you've looked this movie up, haven't you? Uh, no, I well I've I've uh, I've read like a, one or two oh, oh, reviews. Pictures. Again, I you know just in, just in passing. Um, you know, like I, you know, like the reviews, they didn't really spoil much, but they kind of gave me like, you know, they kind of gave like the basic rundown and, you know, like themes and elements and things like that, but nothing like where it'll spoil anything. Okay. Uh, oh, good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm aware of this movie. I'm, you know, I just don't, I just haven't watched it yet. Yeah. So at the end, what they do is. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, so obviously, like you, uh, <clears throat> we know you love horror, John. But how? Uh, and you do that. You do your own. You do your podcast with a couple of other people. How did How did the cut above start? Like I know it's uh, it's been about a year since you guys started. Yeah, it, it, we're pushing a year of this podcast. So cut above uh, colon horror review. Um, actually, it got me start. Two years ago, so I've been in this game for like three years ago. I, I started with a uh, podcast called the Horrorphoria Podcast, which is similar. I mean, it's just we give our thoughts about the movie, give a rating, whatever it is. Um, 
the horror movie community is such a open community that oh yeah <laughs> nobody gives a shit about you know who you are or what you do or whatever is that we talk about horror movies and uh i i, I get gotta give a lot of props to a another podcast sorry guys uh called the straight children podcast because i met my two co-hosts via them uh jacqueline and hydroberg uh yeah we started it over a year ago we, we just kind of played around with things recorded it said okay we got to do this um yeah man we're we're coming up on episode number 51 the one year anniversary coming up in like two weeks so man it's been great i love talking about horror yeah yeah you guys do a really i because i i've been uh i've been binging uh binge listening to you guys you know while, while i'm at work I, I i have plenty of time while i'm at work while i uh so I, I'll, I'll listen to a bunch of stuff and yeah, I, you know, I, I kind of started off by, yeah, I, I kind of like, you know, pick and chose like, Oh, I like, I, that's an interesting movie or I want to watch that. So I'm going to listen to this real quick and kind of see like what I'm getting myself into. Um, but yeah, then I, I slowly, I just kind of like started listening to you guys, like the episodes in order and uh, yeah, it's, you guys do a fucking great job. Uh, you guys are a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, your guy Hyderberg, that guy is a fucking, he's a beast. He's so talented. Like, uh, uh, Andy, they do a, uh, what's called a, he does like, uh, the, how we kind of like, we just tell the, the premise of the film, like kind of the, he does this thing called a reach around and he does, he like has this whole like rhythmic poetry thing that he does giving the plot of the film. I'm like, it is. Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> It was it, uh, basically he gives the whole plot of the movie. I mean, again, I'll I'll do the spoiler alert at the beginning, uh, and then it's it's like he, he, <laughs> the guy, he's so he, uh, he's just talented. I, he's got these things in his head, like when he sees a movie and he rhymes it together almost like he's rapping. And it and and it's for me, it's wonderful. <laughs> and we laugh. Like, yeah, oh, it's it great. Like you guys have a. He's so talented. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, then, no, for sure. I know. I feel, yeah, I'm, I feel like a little bit of an asshole here, but uh, I, yeah, I didn't get it. For some reason, I wasn't able to, uh, you know, do my, be- you know, homework or whatever and check your podcast out, but uh, I certainly will, um, you know, well, after you, this. You know, it's, they, they do a really great job, Andy. Like, uh, uh, I, like I said, well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, just I, getting to, you know, just knowing John, I'm sure, I'm sure that it's, the quality is excellent. Um, yeah. I'm looking, and then, and I'm looking uh, forward to checking it out. I, I tell you, and then we got to give props to Jacqueline. She keeps us on track because we're like, like, oh, like, she, she, she's the wrangler. She keeps you guys like, you know, <laughs> she, she, we're like kidding. two kids that are just like having fun and like, you know, like, <laughs> the word shit and fuck all the time. And it's like, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, guys, <laughs> calm it down. Like, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Oh, so she's like the big sister, you know, like, you yeah. know, knock it off, goofballs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Slapping us back virtually, right. mm-hmm. back upside the head. You know, but you know, she's she's the lead stooge. <laughs> mm, I know she's the mo. She's the mo. No, she's yeah. the, she's the wrangler. Yeah, no, but yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said, I I I've been really enjoying uh, listening to you guys. You got, uh, and you know, especially like you know, there's a bunch of movies that you guys have talked about where I'm like, I've never heard of this film. This is gonna be interesting and. When we first met John, you were talking about like, yeah, we're gonna be reviewing a movie called Virus Thirty Two, <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is that? I've never heard of this, and I ended up watching it. And I was like, this is pretty dope. You know, it's uh, let's pull the curtain back. Is that you got my login to Shutter? That well, that is true. I did. I did get your login to Shutter, <laughs> and I have been using that very often. <laughs> yeah. I can see what you're watching, and damn, what the hell. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's like I wouldn't watch that movie. That movie's fucked up. Uh, yeah, no, it's um, well, a show that like you and I uh, like that you and I both enjoy. And Andy, you know my love for stuff like Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Uh, I I grew up on that, so I, I watch a lot of shit, you know, in, in my time. Uh, Andy knows. Uh, but oh then, yes, he 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 shares. 
He shares. Oh, what? In October, I wish he wouldn't. I wish he wouldn't, but he shares. Yeah. In, uh, share your shit. Okay, awesome. Well, in October, we're doing a whole month of uh, Schlocktober. So we're, you know, it's Mystery Science Theater 3000 worthy films. Oh, um, joy. I know Andy's really looking forward to that. Uh, but no, uh, but another one of these, like, kind of like, you know, kind of great host style um, guys was uh, Joe Bob Briggs. That was another person that John and I, I know, listened to or watched a lot during our, our childhood. Um, I don't know if you remember, like, TNT Monster Vision, uh, Andy. Loved it. But I yeah, I, that's something like. Yeah, that vaguely sounds like, familiar. You, you probably, like, it, if you, like, saw, like, you know, some stills, it was like, oh, yeah, I did, I, I, I do remember that. Because mm-hmm. uh, he was on all the time. And that's, we got introduced to a lot of horror movies that way. It's like, what the fuck is this movie? Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but now he, it, and he's kind of like this, you know, host that's become super popular. And he does a show on Shudder called The Last Drive-In. And it's kind of like, and now like he's, it's kind of like no holds barred. Like he can kind of just do, if he has like license to do a movie, he's going to do it. Like it's, he can kind of just do, you know, do what he really wants to do. And um, yeah, it's just really great stuff. I, I love this guy. He's not only is he like, he's funny, he's knowledgeable. He dresses up like the, like the rhinestone cowboy every, every week. It's, it's like, it's <laughs> A polo tie and like a bright shirt, you know, a guy from Texas. Yeah, uh, he he's great, and uh, you know, if you ever are like you know, and the uh, the movie that we're going to be reviewing today, like you know, he, this is a film that he uh, that he hosted that he reviewed as well, and it's just like, man, I I would have never known this about the film, you know, and sometimes like even like the really obscure stuff, it's like. There's no information on this film. How did he find? How did he? How did he find this shit out? You know, it's. I, I'm always like amazed, and I, you know, because me, I, uh, especially now that we, because we've been doing movie reviews for about four years now, um, and you know, I'm all, you know before like I used to just like watch films just to watch them. It's like, oh, that was pretty good, but now I've gone to this. I can't watch a movie without like. I need to know more about. I need to know more about this. What the hell was going on here? How did they do this scene? And I, I'm a. I've become a huge fucking nerd, where like, I'm looking up like I gotta. I'm gonna try to find interviews with you know like about this. Yeah, film. Robert. The yeah, he's definitely like a nuts and bolts uh, type of like cinephile, um, as well as a little bit of like you know he wants to know how the sausage was made. Uh, there's, yeah. there's something wrong with that. I don't think. No, no, I mean, of course not. Uh, it's like, 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 just grabbing more knowledge and maybe making the enjoyment of the movie even bigger for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and because I think like when I'm trying to, because some people are like, oh, you know, I don't know about that movie, or like, yeah, that that seems a little complicated. It's like, well, let me give you some, you know, some of the information about it, like. You know this this film was like you know has this this and this in it. You know they did. You know this has like one of the uh, this movie has like the biggest car chase scene that was ever like filmed or like you know and uh, like gone in sixty seconds as I think the longest chase scene in a film and it's, it's garbage. The movie's it's so. Wait, is that the one so with bad. Nick Cage or the original one? The original one. Okay. The original one is like it's it's just one of those things that gets lost to history. It's just like it, but it's so freaking great yeah you know, and i just i like learning about the film and like you know especially movies that are based off of real life it's like what's the real life story how close was it you know how close was it actually and or and do we even care you know because like stuff like braveheart you know it's like it's so yeah it has real people in it but the story the way that the story presented it's like it's so fake it's so like unrealistic it's not it's not what happened I think I think a lot of movies are so subjective is that, that that if you find enjoyment from it, okay, you're you're gonna look past all these mistakes, right? Oh yeah, I don't I don't care about like you know continuity errors per se, like or like if it's if it's based off a real story but it's not presented accurately. I don't care about that. Is it, but it's just more like I, it's just more of a curiosity to me, like what was, you know, like in the case of like Henry, you know, that this is, that's a, yeah, it's an artistic view of like what, you know, 
was Henry a real person? He absolutely was. Yes. But this movie is not necessarily you know, one thousand percent realistic, you know, or like it to the real story. And it doesn't have to be. And that it, but it's just it's just fun learning about the real guy. Um mm-hmm. so so that's kind of like where I, I go. I and that's what, what I loved about this movie is John McNaughton did a really, really nice thing of like like taking a different serial killer is like Texas Chainsaw Massacre based it off of Ed Gein from Wisconsin. Yeah, was, dude, there's so many movies so, made yeah exactly so like other movies kind of like you know just really bit off of that and like oh yeah let's make it off of uh ed gein no it was <laughs> and joe bob did such a wonderful job i the, the, like the way he described it was that otis the character of otis was actually otis and he was more of the psychopath than henry lee lucas was yeah yeah, it just it, it it was interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, it's um. So, but yeah, that that's why I like a lot of these like shows, like you know, and even like with you know, Mystery Science Theater three thousand, they kind of in a, in their fun way, yeah, yeah, they're uh, you know, they're making fun of these films, and but at the same time, you're learning about like a lot of these. Uh, a lot of these uh, like actors and directors in these movies, and uh, a lot of times, like a lot of these like shit films, you know, usually have like, oh, this, uh, yeah, this is a shit film, but like this ended, up, you know, that director ended up becoming like a big deal, or that actor ended up going to do big things, and you kind of start to learn about about the films, and that, you know, that's why I like stuff like this. But uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, I, I like stuff. I like stuff like this a lot. Me too. Big time. Sorry, I had to get a cocktail. No, no worries. No worries. Get your poor old brother a beer. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, uh, you know. Bob's so- Oh my god, he was so creepy in this fucking movie. Yeah, well let's let's dive into this fucking film, dude. Cause let's this do dude, it. Uh because Henry uh so Henry Porter was still a serial killer. Yes. It was filmed in eighty six, but you know, release dates are all over the place because this is a film that the production company fucking hated because it, it wasn't gory enough. It wasn't exploitative enough. Um, and then the censor, the, the censor board fucking hated this film and they're like, there's nothing you can do. Uh, you know, it will all, it it kind of fell under that, that the, the, the X rating or NC seven, they actually created the NC 17 rating because of this film, which is essentially the same fucking thing. Yeah, I know. You're not making any money off of that. Yeah. Well, and here's, here's the crazy thing too, because, you know, Back in 1969, Midnight Cowboy was an X-rated film, and it won a fucking Oscar. So the fact that uh, <laughs> that interesting, yeah, really, yeah. Oh, it was. It won. I think it won Best Picture that year in '69. Wait, Shit. Midnight Cowboy, really? Yeah. Well, John Boyd and uh, Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it won the whole I'm walking it here. Won, oh, what awards? That's the thing. And it was an X-rated film because that movie is fucking horrible. Or not horrible. The movie's good. But like the the content is so disturbing. Well, I I, I think it's, and, and, it's tough to say because in our 2022 eyes, is that wasn't it really really tightly based on homosexuality? And well, like, I mean, it was. I, mean, well, I wouldn't be surprised. That's yeah. that's what like made people go like, "We're good, man." You know, it's like okay, oh, so. My. Well, I mean, a guy trying to be an escort, he might as well be gay. Right. But, but the thing is, is like, like our eyes right now, it's like, okay, you're gay. Thumbs up. That's, that, well, so, yeah, that's, that's a fair a, point. That wasn't necessarily like the part that was like disturbing to me, but like it was more of like the. It's, it, it didn't. Yeah, like, Somebody died of AIDS, right? Dustin Hoffman. It's been so. Yeah, so Dustin cool. Hoffman's character, like some sort of he, like yeah, he was like he was already Dustin Hoffman's character is oh like was always like kind of sickly, but then 
you know, right. as, but as soon like as soon as you know he you know he kind of you know their associations uh, began uh, you know Dustin Hoffman's character and John Boyd's character. That's like when his health like really started going downhill. Right. Um, yeah. And that's when he like that's when uh, the Dustin Hoffman character like you know passes away on the bus. You know on the on their way you know down south to Florida. Yes, I do remember that. Oh yeah. That. But this, this uh, you know that movie was. That, uh, that and Easy Rider both came out the same year. That was the kickoff of New Hollywood. It was, you know, this this was like where the film, the, the film, um, you know, the film studios were kind of like, you know, the way things had been done were changing. And these are the movies that kind of kicked off New Hollywood. And Midnight Cowboy, yeah, it got an X rating, you know, based, you know, from, I think, the MPAA. Like, it, they're like, this is a, but it won. I mean, there, were, it, there was nothing abhorrent about no, it, no, no. And, 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 and it's like Henry... Same thing, same thing. Hey, Joe Bob, Joe Bob, and this is what I watched last night, and he brought up, he's like, why? Okay, so what was there? You've seen breasts. You've seen a simulated rape of, of, of somebody in a movie. However, that movie did not get an X rating because of what? Because it was this... Fantastical, uh, uh, um, you know, bad guy in this movie of, you know, okay, there's blood and guts, but we don't want it to be real. Well, and here, here's the other thing, too, that I really appreciate about what they were trying to do with the film. Because, well, it was partly written by John McNaughton. And he got this guy, this super writer, uh, Richard Fife, who is fantastic. He's brilliant. He uh, Unfortunately, he's passed away now. But he is like, no, we're going to do it differently. And it's like, we're going to, the, the violence in this film, it, you're not going to feel good about it. Because that's, and that's really the message of the film. Like, you're not supposed to feel good about the stuff that's happening. Like, because we, we have all these action films, like, where, what was it, like, Total Recall, like, where, they, you know, because that's the one that they, they're thinking about, like, you know, that came out around a similar time. It was like, he's gunning down hundreds of people, and it's gruesome, and it's, it's, and everyone's like, yeah, fuck yeah, that's great. Our film does none of that. And it's like, and, but you feel uncomfortable with what this character is doing, and that's how you should feel about violence. And, and really, the, you know, I, and I've seen, some really grotesque films, like, you know, and that should have, you know, probably should have an X rating. You know, like, Eyes Wide Shut, that's a fucked up, really fucked up film uh, that has a lot of grotesque sex and uh, all this stuff. But, like, this film really, do uh, yeah, does it show a couple of boobs? Sure. You know, we see some dead bodies. We don't, but we, outside of, like, a couple of, like, outside of, like, one scene, we actually don't see any kills. And we get that horrible scene with, uh, at the end of the film, that we'll, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more, a little bit later on, that horrible scene with uh, Otis and his sister, that's horrifying. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's not really a graph, or and obviously the, uh, the, the invasions, the home invasion scene, but that's mm -hmm. really not bad. I thought the audio was perfect on this movie. I mean, if you put your headphones on it or on while you're watching this movie, it is uh, just get the sounds of uh, right. neck cracking or somebody getting stabbed. Right. And it was really and, Yeah, that was one thing I didn't uh, notice. And then Robert shared uh, that uh, that link uh, to that, uh, to that, uh, like, I don't know. Uh, the making of yeah the making of kind of thing and they're talking with the uh the composers and how you know they incorporated a lot of like you know instead of what was it uh they try to do like they try to like they try to they did tableaus and then like show like the story through like the like through the audio portion of like you know screams and you know you know crashes and things like that and i thought shut that was up. just perfect shut up shut up yeah, 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 like fucking bitch. But before we get too ahead, well, before we get too ahead of ourselves, uh, Andy, why don't you give the synopsis of the film, and then uh, we'll we'll kind of go from there. We'll, we'll kind of, you know, it's not too long of a film, so we can kind of just you know break it down, kind of scene by scene, real quick. Right. 
Okay. Oh, you got a synopsis for this? Yeah. No, I I didn't write it. I'm just you know I'm just pulling it from the internet. Oh, okay. Oh, but Henry Portrait of Sarah Lee. Sure. Yeah, Henry Portrait of Sarah It's Sarah fucked up. It's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Henry is released from prison following his mother's murder. He supplements his job as an exterminator with a series of indiscriminate and violent murders. Fellow jailbird and drug dealer Otis becomes a willing uh, accomplice in Henry's bloody killings. But as the depravity escalates and Henry forms a bond with Otis's sister Becky, things start to get out of hand. The film is based on the true life story of serial killer Henry Lee Lucas. And Otis... Like, like the, his, his partner in crime was Otis, but Otis, Otis, I guess there were two T's in there or two O's, whatever Somewhere. it was. I don't know. <laughs> this movie is like, yeah, it's hard to watch, but it's so good. Yeah. Oh. Um, I, I would, uh, I would equate it to the same feeling I got after watching, uh, Wind River. Yes. Uh, have you seen uh, that? Yeah, have you seen that movie, John? No, I never have. Uh, yeah, it's one of uh, it's like it's kind of like a, a tr- it's kind of a trilogy uh, by uh, writer director uh, Tyler Sheridan. Like he did, he did a Sicario, and uh, I don't know, and I don't know if you've seen this other one. It's kind of obscure, but uh, you know, Hell or High Water. No. Okay. But, yeah, but. Uh, uh, it's it's on the same level of fucked up as this film is. Hold on, let me write it down. Yeah, Wind River. Got it. Yeah, and then uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, I would agree that it, it's that level of fucked up because it's really this movie is so uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, uh, and so the movie is directed by John McNaughton. This is the second film that we uh, have reviewed of his. We did Wild Things several years ago, which is a fucking great movie. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, this film, this is uh, this is his first big film. Like he did like a docu- a couple of documentaries before this. Uh, you know, which I, uh, you know, about like you know, thirties gangsters. Uh, but this is his theatrical debut. Um, you know, uh, and actually, everyone that's you know, pretty much everyone that's involved with this film, it's their first one. You know, this is this is where everyone kind of really got their start, um, and I think it came out pretty damn perfect. Uh, you know, it's just it, it's uh, everything. I I wouldn't change a damn thing about this film. It, it's no, this this is like one of those movies where you think about it and it's like, oh, could this use a remake or reboot? No, you know, if you like, yeah, if I think people that who really enjoy this movie, like, if there was ever talk about a remake of this movie, there'd be a general uprising. No, the, no, there is a sequel. I've never seen it, but <laughs> what? <laughs> really? Yeah, there, there's a Henry. No, I didn't know that. Or two. <laughs> wow. I have not seen it. I don't know if I want to see it. Henry two, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, and it's, uh, I think one of the guys that was on the, the crew for this one was a director. It wasn't John McDonough that did it, but it was another mm-hmm. part of the crew that I think did the sequel. Uh, I, I don't know much about the sequel, but yeah, I was like, why, why is there a sequel to this? Um, was Michael Rooker in it? Was Tom Paul's in it? I was don't, the, that's the, the thing, the, I don't know, I don't think so. I don't, no. Based, when I was looking at their both their filmographies, no, I don't think they're. I don't think either one is in it. Well, obviously Tom Tolles is in it because he's dead. So, <laughs> and yes, he is. Uh, both in real life and his character. Yeah. Uh, did Tom Tolles uh, pass away? Yeah, he died of a stroke in 2015. Um, yeah, I saw that on Joe Bob, and it was bummed out because it was like I, I guess I didn't catch that when I watched it. He's a horror legend. He's been in so many great horror films. Like a Rob Zombie movie? Oh yeah, I I, I know you. I know that your <laughs> podcast loves Rob Zombie. You're Rob Zombie apologist. <laughs> we do not. <laughs> we do not. We talk shit about him every chance we get. 
<laughs> that is a, a reoccurring theme on every episode. It's like, it, it, got to shit on Rob Zombie. No, but the thing is, is that I love Rob Zombie's music. especially That's not much his movies. But his, no, 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 I don't. You guys brought up a, a He's got some shit on my favorite movie of all time, Halloween. And I'm like, ah, uh, there it is. Fuck, there it is. I haven't, I have not seen that one, but I've heard so many bad things. I, I'm like, I'm just curious to see how bad it is. Let me school you without spoiling this, Robert. Um, he, he gives a backstory on why Michael Myers becomes a serial killer. Why? Oh, oh yeah, I, I saw this. No, I didn't see the whole movie, but yeah, that's right. It, it's Halloween is a monster movie. It's a, it's a monster franchise. He's supposed to be enigmatic. He's just, he's there to kill people. He's a six-year-old kid. Backstory on him. He's a six-year-old kid that wanted candy, didn't get candy, killed his sister, had a butcher knife that was bigger than he was, and then went away for 16 years? 16 years. Something like that. And the 19 came home. Oh, my God. You're a evil. Well, you, you guys did bring up a good point on your podcast on the last episode about, like, how, like, Ty West, who did, like, X, and, like, Rob Zombie should do, like, a mashup, like, uh, you know, and work on a film together. It's like, because there's, uh, both the both guys put together elements of good movies, but they just haven't quite done it right yet. Here, here's the thing about Ty West, is that he's such a great writer. Uh, watch The Sacrament. Because, <clears throat> to me, like, the best movie he did was House of the Devil. Yeah. Sacrament to me, because it was so, like, like like gritty and low budget, and it was found footage, documentary style, that was really good. Rob Zombie is a really good director. He has an eye for, like, seeing shots. Visually, his movies are amazing. I, I, I agree. I agree. And I'm actually looking forward to the monsters, which... I, I am. I saw the trailer for it, and I was like, uh, okay, I can see this. Yeah, I, I'm excited for it. I mean, I was a naked night kid, and I watched the monsters, and... Oh, hell yeah. Had a little crush on Lily. Of course. I, that's... No, that, no explanation needed. And no, no, no. I won't go into it. But again, I mean, it, it, it's just like... I don't know. Where are we going with this? <laughs> anyway, sorry. Anyway, anyway, yeah, back to back to the movie. Back to the movie. All right, back to the movie. Uh, uh, what did you guys think? Uh, and Joe brought Joe Bob brought it up. It was the score of the movie. How did you feel? Did you feel viscerally about it? Or was... Your fucking spine. Yeah, that was like you know, there's like really like perfect boom, boom, boom. Uh, soundtracks, like you know, like Jaws or. Uh, boom, boom. Halloween. You know, it's Halloween. Kind of like, yeah, yeah, exactly. That, it's like this, like this is like so perfect for this movie. Th that's one of those things. Like when you hear that first note, oh, well, that's Henry. Oh shit, you know it's and uh, it was and what I the composers talked about like what they're because they ended up like we got to do something different, mm -hmm. and so they were like they came back with like all these different like sound effects and like what. They really went apeshit with it, even though they, they weren't really getting paid, you know, but they really, they went ass, you know, balls to the walls for this composition. And what I loved about it is like, cause it's very minimal, but it's so impactful the entire movie. Cause even like, you know, when we see like the, the kills in, in the film, like, you know, there are the after effect of the kills we hear the kills you know, you know we hear like what's going on like but it's it's almost like an echo like mm -hmm. you know you're like die bitch die you know and, yeah and it's like, like uh yeah it's it's you know it's like you know, it's very mimetic you know it's very reminiscent of like you know how you kind of remember you know like a uh, a rock concert or like you know when you met like you know when you met your girlfriend for the first time it's like you know it's all like kind of like these little tiny things that like stick out to you that you remember here, here's my, here's my thought on, like, especially like that, um, that first, I mean, we see obviously the, the dead body, which was based off of actual photographs of kills that this guy did, mm -hmm. but there, uh, not, as the police are driving by, that was awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're, you're going after Henry. Uh, no, the, um, um, the, 
there's that one scene like after he <clears throat> is talking to the um, to the waitress at the diner, we see the murder at another diner, and I'm almost wondering like because like you said those those scenes are almost like to me those first few death scenes that we see those are echoes, and I think that he is not those weren't like kills that he had just done. But he's always going back and thinking about the kills he's done. And so, like, his time at the diner, he's being reminded of, like, oh, yeah. like it's And like I said, the way that the score is set, where it's like, yeah, it's almost like a, a, almost a long-forgotten memory, but you still remember it. And so it's just, like, kind of this, you know, distant echo of, like... The reason- and I, I love how they did that. That's fucking brilliant. Okay, I, I disagree because of the fact that, that, that when he's talking to Becky and uh, how he killed his mother, I think the real story was the trauma he went through, the sexual abuse that he went through, which is terrible. Mm-hmm. But he, he doesn't remember how he killed his mom because he can't remember. Like, like, like the one he, thing he tells Otis like throughout the movie is like, you don't do it the same way each time. Ah. It's like... Okay, so you can use a gun, but you can't use a forty-five on this time. You you got to use a thirty-eight or a lead pipe or whatever. Right, yeah, that's why he says like, yeah, just don't use the same gun twice. And then and then like bringing it back to the score of the movie is that Henry almost became human with Becky Mm -hmm. because like 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 when when they got the video camera, and we'll talk about that later is that they're filming it and they're actually making out and he gets into it and he he's he becomes human right for but, that brief for that brief moment he becomes a human being but when he leaves and otis is being a dipshit uh, he goes to get cigarettes uh he says fuck the bears and this is said in chicago and he's yeah. like <laughs> yeah, I love that line. you know the bears are, are are the shit out in chicago right the bears that's when the original score from the beginning of the movie starts. Is like, like, like this is a reiteration of of who Henry really is, right? Mm. He, he, he's oh, he's yeah. this he's this non feeling. I don't give a fuck, and he doesn't give a fuck because he's, I, I want to jump to the end. Ugh. Right, yeah, right, right, right. I just like I, I'm like that's the thing. Like I wasn't. Because I feel like, because this is, the way that they're presenting this person, they're doing it in a very artistic way. Yes. Which is like, where I'm thinking, like, because he, like, he's, like, I agree with you. He's a complete psychopath. There are, there are moments where he does become humanized. But that's, a, that, that's the problem of being a psychopath, is that you can portray yourself, or a sociopath, is that you can portray yourself as being somebody that you never see you, you pass on the street or or you go to the grocery store and, and grab your carrots or whatever it is and it's like that's not a psychopath but, but this is a guy that is constantly reliving and the you know the the trauma that he's gone through like because his the way that like the stuff that his mom put him through which is fucking horrible and mm-hmm. you know it's like Parents, don't do this shit to your kids. You, you might be a serial killer. It, it, like, he's still responsible for what he's done, but it's like, don't do this shit. You know, I, I, I listened to another podcast called The Casual Criminalist, and God, how many of these fucking serial killers have, like, been molested or done, you know, had shit like this done to them? It's really horrible. But you got the backstory of that. You didn't get the trauma from, from Henry. But I'm saying, like, you know... It does. Because the way John McNaughton set up these shots, he's in a diner, right? So so the first shot of the movie is this woman laying naked by a river, dead. And the next shot is him in a diner of him smoking a cigarette, finishing up his coffee and breakfast or whatever it was. And he says to the, the waitress, he goes, got a real, real nice smile there, darling. And gives her a tip and asks for some cigarettes and leaves. And then the next scene is who he killed in a liquor store. Yeah, well, and that, that's what I'm saying. Like, but I, I he, uh, because we never actually, like, outside of, like, the, 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 the black market dealer, he, we never, uh, and then Otis at the end, but, like, we, we never actually see him Well, the Good Samaritan. 
This he is where he kills anybody, but or, or you never see him kill anybody. And the, the, he's the always living this shit in his head. Right. But the thing is, is that he's always polite. He's always this this person that is unassuming. Which, right. That, and that's what the, the the director and everyone was going for. It's like, yeah, you're not. It's not Michael Myers. You know, it's not like you know Jason Voorhees. It's it's most serial killers just look like everyday guys that you would never. You know, like oh, I would have never suspected he he stuffed thirty bodies under under his uh, attic, you know in his attic. You know, it's you know it's like. <laughs> it's, Andy, I'm curious what you thought about the uh, the, the shopping mall scene. He pulls up to the shopping mall seat or a shopping mall. Oh, right. Where he's like, he's like, yeah, that's like, that's like, he's hunting. Yeah. You know? He's hunting. He's like scoping out. It's like, oh, like that one's like, oh no, she's getting into her car too fast or, oh, oh she's with somebody or, you know, right. or like, you know, oh, that one's too fat or, you know, or whatever the fuck, you know, he, his rationale is and like picking his targets. Um, yeah. And- what I what I like about Henry though is like you know in this because you know it's like he is he is a very calculated killer. Otis is a, a fucking wild card, but like whereas him he's like I can't I can't do it to anybody I've been seen with or associated with. It has to be random strangers and I have to do it in random ways. Okay, right. so- and and that's, that's interesting because typically in like like the serial killer like duo thing, there's always. You know, like the, you know, the, uh, am I getting this right? But there's like always the id who's like, you know, pure like instinct and just like, you know, off, you know, off the chain and wants to kill like all the time. And then there's like the one that's like more reserved. I guess that would be like the ego or super ego that kind of has to restrain. That's the the partner in that sense. So yeah, I, I enjoyed that, uh, uh, that kind of element to their relationship. Oh, so okay, so the kill with the woman that he followed home after the shopping mall, right? Mm-hmm. Do you know who was in the front yard playing football? No. Her husband and her son. What? Okay, that's. I thought that was the case because. <laughs> wait, was it? Wait, was it her? It's, wait, because uh, no, I, I know the husband does come out to like help with like carry that's, whatever. That's him, and she's got a son. So they're playing football. They're throwing the football back and forth. And Henry walks up with, conveniently, the, the bug spray thing. Right, from the pre- from his day job. The, yeah, the boss. No, just keep it. I'll keep you on retainer or whatever. <laughs> and that was the husband and the son. He just walks into the house, kills this poor lady, and it burns her with cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, and, I saw the cigarette burns. That's, did you see that? That's fucking okay. messed up. Uh, and- John, you caught the thing that I was like, I was thinking about. I was like, wait, he, because I, I at first I was like, is she like, was she just like a lonely like you know, uh, oh. you know, housewife or not like housewife for, you know, he attacked her like while she was alone. It's like, no, he fucking went there, her, oh. and, and we see that too like later on because he attacks that entire family. You but, said you said it perfectly. Is that he he he's a predator. <laughs> he knows exactly what's going on. Right. God, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I know he saw like the husband, but it, like, yeah, the second time when he when he goes back with the sprayer tank, it didn't even like yeah. The the the, the two people that he passed, like they're tossing the football right. That didn't even cross my mind that that was the husband like... and kid. <laughs> and at first, like, I was like, because when you got when you guys talked about it on your podcast, I was I was thinking like, what the fuck, you know? Because like, I saw like the marks on her body and like her face. I was mm-hmm. like. Did he? Because I was like, did he attack her with that fucking like bug sprayer? Like, mm-hmm. and like were, no, yeah, he did something more sadistic. I was like, <laughs> Jesus! Oh, he just he, it looks like he brought the uh, phone cord, like the old style phone phone yeah, cord, yeah. neck, and then burned her with cigarettes because he was keeping to his code. I sorry, Dexter. He was reliving, you know, what his mom did to him there. Maybe I and that could be it. What he wanted to do to his mom. He did to her. It could have been. I mean, that's that's a great point. It, it could have been well, like things he wanted to do. His his victims were not male until the end, right? Yeah, the only males that he killed were the black market dealer and Otis. Oh, and and I guess the guy at the uh, um, at the the liquor store slash diner, but that was more like because he was a witness. 
Yeah. Well, he, tried, he was trying to protect his wife. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and, and the family, and because he killed the kid, and right, uh, yeah, and then the good Samaritan. Well, well he, no, it wasn't him. He though. killed the dad after he killed the kid. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that was so hard to watch. Oh my god. No, no, was, uh, I found footage. There you go. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, it was, you know, it was really crazy how like uh, you know Michael Rooker did like the, the actual camera work for that shot, and then you know he had to like you know jump back into the scene as it were. Um, well, it, what was so about that scene too? Um, he, yeah, he was doing the, he was holding the camcorder for part of that scene, and then when it came time for you know, like, oh, like you know, like seemed like he threw down the camera, but it was still angled in a certain way. He handed the camera off to the actual camera guy, the cinematographer, and he like he artfully flipped it to a certain point, so you're still getting the scene, right? Um, but like it's so which is like oh okay that's cool, but man it looks so natural. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah it's crazy how like they even wanted to take that scene further with like you know Otis then like you know uh, you know you know trying to have sex with the you know dead woman's body. Well that was the, that was the thing with like him and Otis. Ot uh, Henry was always like. No, Otis, don't fuck your, don't kiss your sister, don't like try molest her, don't fuck that dead body. You know, it's, you know, it's like right, yeah, and then again, it, it goes back to the like their that, whole. Did you get the vibe that Henry was was a rapist? No, no, I, I didn't either. I I got that he just got off on killing. Right. Yeah, yeah there was that. They never. I mean, despite yeah. all, despite all the like, the tableaus like it, it, in. In the beginning of the movie, where like you know the the girl who was found naked and you know with only the socks, or the naked girl in you know, you know who was who was like in you know in the river, or like the girl with you know who like had her clothes like ripped off, but like had like a broken bottle shoved in her face. You know, you know why? I but but it never that... like but it never get it, it never gave off the vibe that like you know he was a rapist. You know mm -hmm. why I know that Henry was not the rapist be only because. That scene with him and Becky, like where like you know they there is like this slight intimate moment between the two. You oh, know, like, no, I, like he he doesn't he's like no I don't want this like he's very shy in that moment, right. and it, it's Otis that's the the fucking creepazoid. That, well, yeah, that's what I thought. O Otis is like the biggest piece of shit in this movie. You know, it's, it's like you hate him more than Henry. Right, because he elevates. He, he says a a line in the movie. It was like, um, "I didn't kill anybody, but they uh, didn't deserve it, or or, or they, they they deserved it, or something like that." And it was just like, I, you know, it, Henry's a sociopath. He'll kill anybody, but he's like, "Yeah, I kill people, but they deserve it." Yeah. Right, so you know, like there's like emotion, uh, you know, associated for for Otis, as opposed to Henry, who was just like, I just want to kill people. Well, I mean, that's who he was, right? Uh, yeah, but like the, um, that, and Otis, uh, the, I know there were some scenes cut from the film, yeah, because it was more out of. They felt like it didn't fit the characters correct. Like, yeah, you know, as far because this is a very serious film, yeah. but there were a few scenes where it went over the top. Where it's like, okay, this is just almost too comical. For one, uh, there was a uh, kind of like a uh, a gay scene between uh, Henry and Otis. Uh, like a after the uh, that was cut, the scene like where you know. Uh, the the scene where Henry's talking about like it's either it's there's two things it's either us or that you know us or them and you know but like that scene evolves into them like kind of almost having like a um you know, Sex relationship yeah relationship and, and there was that element of uh in the real life between those two there was that element of relationship but and they they went in even Michael Rooker said, "It's like, yeah, there was some, there was stuff filmed that I'm so glad didn't get put in the movie because it's just like I'm glad that that is just gone." You know what I'm they, they made the Otis character 
a homosexual. He, but here's the thing, though. He, I don't think he's just or was, or was he, or maybe they, he was like prison he was gay. Bisexual. I don't know. I mean, like to just me, it was like like, like the high school kid when he's giving him drugs, he grabs his leg and gets punched, and he's like, I gotta kill somebody. I gotta Here, kill somebody, Henry. Here's my thinking on Otis. It's I don't think that I don't think it's anything about being homosexual or bisexual or anything like that. He's just a sexual deviant. It's it's not about like the the pleasure. It's about like you know holding holding that over people. Like where because I don't think that the the scene where we get at the end where like he he's raping his sister. That's not the first time that's happened. That happened before. I guarantee oh, it, it. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Good thing you brought this up because I did want to pose this question to you to you both, um, and that is. Um, like, given, like, how Otis kind of behaves around his sister Becky, like, do you think, like, the story that that Becky tells Henry, you know, is, uh, you know, is a bit of, like, uh, the, she cast it, like, differently? Like, you know, because she was so young, she, you know, she's, you know, she replaced uh, her father uh, and Otis? No. You know? I think I think I honestly I think it's both. I think her dad and Otis have done that to her. I, I think Otis was maybe protective of her because she was trusting of him. Uh huh. I, I, I think the dad was really, really abusive towards her. I think Otis was not in the picture for a long time and became the dad at the end. Uh Oh, you, uh, oh, that's that. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I, I never thought because my thought was that like I think Otis is just because uh, she is you know when Tracy or uh, when uh, Tracy Arnold's character Becky comes to him, I think she's pretty much like because she had done her best to escape you know her family, mm-hmm. like you know she was desperate and so it's like. I gotta go back to I got you know she's not gonna go back to her dad obviously so she's gonna go to her brother. She, yeah, she married she married Leroy and Leroy was like the same piece of shit that her brother and her dad were. But I I, I got the vibe that that Otis was actually kind of protective of her, even though he was kind of I don't know just he's an asshole. Yeah, he was a total asshole. But I don't think he abused her. But I think he became that after he became a murderer or a psycho. Oh, okay, all right. I can see that. I just assumed that because you don't just hop into like, you know what? I'm going to fuck my sister. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He said inappropriate things, but to me it wasn't like, you know, he was like being... Until <laughs> he goes, get your brother a beer and grabs her by the arm and then like Henry grabs him by the hair and goes, but oh. he- that scene, that's before the they the the first like where he's with Henry when they do the kill. Right. That's why I'm thinking like there's something that has happened between those two before where he thinks that's okay. Right. Now maybe, right, right. maybe Becky was in on it too. Maybe there was some weird incestuous thing with those two. But, like, you don't just, like, grab your sister and, like, I'm going to, you know, like, and kind of, like, touch her in a very weird sexual way like that. Right. In, in, the, in that way, it's kind of like the relationship of, of uh, what's it, uh, from Gladiator, uh, Commodus and his sister. Because, yeah. you know, you, like, you don't just all of a sudden, and like, start taking, start making moves on your sister. Like, the only reason why you do like you do that is that you know you feel or you feel comfortable enough to do that is because something has happened in the past maybe i i i don't know i just i i think otis like went through this transformation of being you know kind of let's say reserved (laughs) yeah yeah, that's 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 a I think that he just went through this transformation of that, like, animalistic uh, things came out of him. That yeah. He wasn't like this before, but all of a sudden it's just like, I can release the beast, maybe. Yeah, once he had that first kill in him, or actually not even before he his first kill, when he had those fucking fries after, like, yeah, after Henry, he watched 
Henry Kill, those yeah. those two prostitutes. So he's, he was in. You know that that was that that those eating of those fries that was releasing the beast. <laughs> And there was a great scene where they were in a, a, a park in Chicago, and they're filming these hobos beating up another hobo. Right. And, and and Henry's trying to explain to him is like, you don't use a forty-five the next time you kill yeah. somebody. Right. If you use one forty-five, don't use it again on another person. Exactly. And but but he's like filming this thing, and he's like he's got got his hat on backwards, and he's just so enthralled with this, and and it's just like. Henry's eating. Okay, this is what you do. This is what you don't do. Like I said, Henry Henry is very calculated, very smart. Otis is just like, he is a loop and can Hair trigger. Like, he's just going to do... He's a country pumpkin. That's all he is. I mean, yeah. he... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk whatever I want. I'm going to kill whatever I want. I don't give... It, it, and he's almost like, you know, he's an asshole to Henry, too. It's like, he, you know, you... Henry's the guy that introduced you to this, and that you're completely shitting on him at the same time. Like, but he's not. I mean, the, the one thing is, is like he's trying to learn, but he's bloodthirsty. Right, he's, right, yeah. It's yeah. He's con- totally he's totally consumed by his bloodlust. And when when he gets out of the uh, the the, the uh, probation officer's office, he goes and meets with this high school kid, and they're like. Are, are they exchange drugs with money? And it's like, hey, you want to try it? And and <laughs> freaking Otis puts his hand on his leg and he gets punched in the nose. He's like, I want to kill that motherfucker. No, you didn't say with him. Otis, go. Let's go for a drive. So they just kill some guy at random. Right. Which yeah. Is just, so fucked yeah. up about this movie. It's like they just go off a turnpike and then kill somebody. And he's like, yeah, Otis, do you need help, or do you, uh, or can you do it yourself? <laughs> that <laughs> that exactly. was a great fucking line. <laughs> what a great line. Because he just picks it up, he's like, I'm fine. Bam, 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 bam. Mm, Shoots this guy. Yeah. Oh. You know, it, it's funny, uh, watching the making of this film, you know, because we see, like, the idea of, you know, girls, you know, hitchhiking, yeah, girls hitchhiking, um, pe- you know, people answering their door. Oh, and that guitar. <laughs> yeah, pe- yeah, people answering like you know to random strangers. Uh, you know, pe- you know, good Samaritans coming to the side of the road. There was a lot of people like that watched that did watch this movie. It's like I'm not fucking doing that shit again. Uh, you know, crazy, you know, crazy stuff like that. Right. right? Yeah. It. Ju- yeah. And. Like you said, you know, this movie has those Wind River elements to it because you're so uncomfortable the entire time. And there, well, it we do get one moment of happiness in Wind River and it's ripped away from us. This film doesn't necessarily have like a happy moment. <laughs> it's like, no, uh, yeah, there's no, yeah, in, in this movie, there's no real, re- there's no real reprieve from all the violence. No. Well, that's true. I will say there is a one satisfying moment when he kills like the the black arms dealer, or not the black arms the uh, the 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 black market dealer like the right. selling all yeah 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 yeah. But again, like yeah, that was designed for everyone to like kind of clap and cheer because like this guy was being such a fucking dick. That's like <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like you get you're getting what you deserve. Uh yeah. And when John comes back, because that that guy, the guy that they got to film that scene, it, it's actually really fascinating. He actually was. He was the biggest, like, uh, video pirate in, like, I, I don't know, at least in Chicago, if not the United States. And he actually had, like, 42, like, felonies put up against him. So he was wow. real life. Yeah. Wow. So it's like, uh, what was it? Art imitating real life. Yeah, I mean, he, like he said, he was a real, like, you know, kind of shitty dude that they got to, to, to throw in this film. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I was just, uh, John, I was just saying how in uh, this film, like, because we, 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 we mentioned Wind River, and in that movie, it's very dark. But there's one scene where you get a little bit of happiness, and it's ripped away from you. And although this film doesn't necessarily have any... I, I would say, like, the one happy moment we get in the film is where 
Henry and Otis kill that uh, that uh, black market dealer in the garage. <laughs> uh, but that guy, uh, was, you know, according to John McNaughton, was he was act, an actual black market dealer. You know, like and. He actually was like the big one of the biggest video piraters of the time. Like he got arrested for that all that shit for uh, I don't know if the guy's still in jail or still alive or anything, but it's like it's <laughs> they actually got the real deal. <laughs> I, there was no happy moments in this movie for me. I I just not at all. Well, I I, I was like kind of like you know stretching to find like you know that. It was satisfying to watch that guy die. It's like, yeah, fuck that guy. He's a jerk. <laughs> right. But the thing is, is it, okay, so he's a black market guy, whatever. Uh, the, the, the prostitutes. It's like, you don't want them to die. Why? Why? Henry had a bloodlust. He was the yeah. biggest piece of shit in the movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's worth the kill. I mean, that's it. Which, uh, which makes this movie so fucked up. It was, it was just like, oh man, it was like, oh. Uh, but yeah, the the real disgusting part of this film, uh, you know, we we've touched on it before. Was the so they 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 kill that uh, that black market dealer after Otis kicks in the TV like yeah. a like you know like a freaking psycho. Yeah. Uh, and you know it's funny because that that's right after, you know, the, I think that's right after the kill of the prostitutes. Was that was that after, was that right after that? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So you know he he's kind of like you know that's where he's you know he's become Otis has become like the he's gone full in. Yeah, so but, he the TV. Did you, know, did you notice as soon as Otis does that, Henry comes out. What'd you do? Why'd you do that? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, what let's, the fuck go, wrong with you? Let, let's go shopping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, just, you know, I, I just picked up this guitar. I just picked up this TV. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, so he does that. They, they kill this black arms dealer. You know, it's like, who's a real fucking jerk. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, yeah, we're, we're all like super excited. Like, yeah, fuck that guy. Uh, you know, kind of like, you know, where it's like the idea of where like, yeah, people like the audience, their bloodlust is like, yeah, we want, we, we want him to die. You know, it's like, cause it's like he deserves it. And then after that, you know, uh, we get to the scene like where they're, you know, prowling around and they stop at this house and they invade this home. They find and gag the husband they are they are fucking around with the wife like you know they're you know or otis is like where he's you know kind of uh getting ready to like rape her and all this stuff yeah so walks in and like henry you know fucking kills the son oh, god that was so that henry, henry was not opposed to him raping her no until she died or got her next step right and she, she he goes oh just no no let's go you know and and it's like oh, even uh, like it's, a crazy psychopath like henry or it's like uh necrophilia is just too far for me <laughs> that wasn't it though with him like, the thing about the character of henry was he was so psychopath that that he understood that you gotta leave. You gotta go. Once, once the job right. is done, right. leave. Right. Once this, you know, once the soul is vacated, that's you know, that's right. you have right. to go. Yeah. That's. But that's what Otis kept rewinding. <laughs> there was one scene where Henry walked in after him and Becky went out for a steak. And right. And he was still watching that scene. Otis is watching this thing in slow motion. Oh God! It was so horrible. Yeah. That, that scene with them on the couch, watching it, watching the playback of that, yeah, one of the most horrifying scenes in cinema history, without question. I mean, it, it was horrifying because they're so calm, 
and it's like it's just like we're watching we're just watching uh, you know the the sports game you know what you know, it's Otis Otis was watching it in slow motion <laughs> I mean he was and he fell asleep to it he was John Maddening that fucking thing like he was, oh. he was like he had a beer burr in his hand he was just like laying back and just fell asleep to it and it's like, it, Henry saved his ass because, like, it's like, dude, what the fuck are you, you know, <laughs> you, you see in his face, like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Well, he didn't know what to do. I mean, the thing, the thing that was brilliant about it is, like, like, Michael Rooker or his character of Henry, he didn't know what to do when he was making out with Becky, and Otis came in and was just like, burr, burr, yeah. Get your brother a beer, you know, whatever it was, and then like uh, ended up here. raping her, and it was like, 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 like Michael Worker just didn't give a fuck. He just wanted to go get cigarettes. The one telltale sign, or, or, or like a foreshadowing, was, uh, what was it? The uh, store guy goes, you know, how about the bears? He goes, fuck the bears. Fuck the bears. Please. Why do you think he didn't? Because uh, we we meet uh, a woman with her dog. Uh, right. That he thinks is a boy, but it's named Dolores and it's a girl. Right. Why didn't he kill? Why didn't he kill her? He's a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. There's like, there's no reasoning. He you know? saw his face or something like that, or, or, or it was just like, you know, it was a foreshadowing of like he's got to go. He's yes. he's to leave. Here's my thought: why he didn't do it? Because he's always talking about like you know. You don't want to kill people that pe- you know, people have seen you around, and the fact that like he told that guy, you know, when the bears like, how about them bears? He's like, fuck the bears! Like that guy's gonna remember him, and if that lady dies around the area, it's like, yeah, there was this weird dude that told me that fuck, that the fuck the bears, you know, it's probably him. <laughs> and then you get a description. I, I I just think that it was just more of a character build of what Henry was. Is that, you know, he's he, he does random killings, but he's also very methodical of how he does it. Right. right. He's still he's still controlled, despite like how we as the audience might think of him as being like this, you know, uh, com- like not conforming to social norms or whatever. But it's like maybe some. Yeah, he's not compulsive. That's what it is. Right. As opposed to like Otis, where it's like you know after he, you know after like the, his he got his first kill, it's like that's all he wants to do, and just like he's all you know, he doesn't care when or or how it happens. Like I'm just gonna kill somebody. But yeah, it, he the, made a, he made a pass at a high school kid, and he's like, I just want to kill him. I just want to kill him. And then exactly. you and know, it, it was like the the voice of reason <laughs> as much as that's. Of, is that Henry's the voice of reason of like? Do you really? Okay, let's go. Let's go right, for yeah. A drive. So it's like he understands like Otis like still has that that desire in him, and so he needs a release, and so you know he goes takes him out. You know, Henry has that same drive a lot. You know, uh, we and Henry is actually a, kind of like a good. This is the precursor to like when we watched Dexter. I mean, I'm sure we've all seen Dexter, right? This, this movie is the precursor to Dexter. I disagree. I, I, I think Henry, I've never seen Dexter. So, but I, I get the general premise. Like, like, I don't think he had a moral compass. You know, Dexter had a moral compass. So he had his, uh, he, I don't, he was given a moral compass. No, but, I, I understand that, but it's like, okay, so maybe it was a precursor of, or, 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 like, a foreshadowing of, if you're a serial killer, you have to have a code. And then, <laughs> but Henry doesn't have a code because he doesn't kill the same way Dexter did. Well, yeah. but here's, here's the thing, though, about that, is that, yes, but there is that, like, there's that thing in Henry where, yeah, he wants to kill. Like, he has that, but he doesn't always exercise that. He's calculating. He's a hunter. You know, he's like, he's, tr- he's like, no, this, this isn't the right time. Now it's the right time. Sure. Now I see it, but whereas Otis doesn't give a shit. Like he, he, well, I'm, blah, 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 you know, I'm gonna, you know, he, he, like, he gets, yeah, he is a beer fueled maniac. He, and that's just a bloodlust. I mean, and again, I, I think Henry had it, but he was controlled. Um, yeah, so if you if you're gonna compare Dexter, sure. 
that like, that that's the comparison I have. It's like it what he. It's not that he was that he didn't have that bloodlust or that he was not a fucked up individual mm-hmm. or that he had any moral anything. Because I even Dex, Dexter, yeah, he has a code, but he's not moral. We just like that they killed bad guys, you know. It's but he Henry was like he understood like no, I can't kill right now. That's not the it's not the right time. I want to, but I can't. But he did though. I mean, the thing was is that they showed at the beginning it was like like a, a woman floating in a river or not floating, but just laying there in a river, and they sh- and they showed like a couple that was dead in a liquor store. And it was just like this bum bum, you know, <laughs> the score of it was dope. So I don't know. I mean, he he didn't have a code. He didn't have this like 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 thought of I gotta kill this particular person because of this. It was just he, he had a bloodlust. But like, like I said, he would he Otis would... was a country bumpkin that was just like, I just want to kill somebody, you know? And it was like Otis was like Yosemite Sam. Like, he was just like, fuck yeah, it. I hate that, Revan. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just... This is one of the greatest independent films I've ever fucking seen. It, this is... You know, yeah, as John McDonald put it, this is both art... You know, this is too artsy to be like a... What was it? Like, too artsy to be an exploitation film, but it was an exploitation film yet at the same time. It, it was a it was a mashup between those two genres. And, my God, how... I really wish... Like, had this movie, like, been... Let's say this movie had come out, like, 10, 20 years later, this would be a celebrated movie. I, I mean, now it, it has become celebrated now, yeah. but I wish it would have been celebrated in its time because. The, right. Yeah. I mean, it was in the eighties, but like, if it if it did if it was made in the nineties, yeah, there'd still be some controversy on it, but it would be a little bit more accepted. I you know, I think this movie was still very misogynistic. I, but that's what they were going for because these characters, of course, of course I, they. Are. I get that, but I mean, if you, like you said, if you made it in the '90s or like early 2000s, it's, it's still very misogynistic. It, oh, it's my, my, who my, are the victims? My thing on it is, is that because not only did like because you know, the production company was like they were kind of pissed off because like this is not what I asked for. This is too artsy, right. and then censors the fucking hate it. It's like this is no. You know, like, you can't... And even, like, the audience were, like... They were running... And when it was show, it's like, fuck this movie, I'm out of here. Yeah, like, half the people got up to leave because they were, like, so offended. Okay, well, quick story on this. Like, so there there was a screening where... uh, Because there was a couple screenings, you know, where people, like, they just walked out, like, fuck this. And uh, there was another screening where, like, there was only one person that left. It was a woman that's like, no, I'm out of here. And she... She and, and Michael Rooker was running late to the screening, and she was running out. Michael Rooker was running in and oh, shot him. And yeah, they like, ran ah. into each other. And she's like, she. <laughs> she, she <laughs> was that? <laughs> and he ran back to her seat and just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, no offense to uh, you know, God bless Michael Rooker, but he has a face of of a of an evil person. Oh, oh yeah. You know, I, I, I'm sure I'm sure he's a lovely man in you know real life, but he has the face of a murderer. He, he is such a sweetheart. He is so he is so kind. Uh, he he is a very loving, kind person who grew up in a oh, in a, in a, in a very horrible situation in Jasper, Alabama. You know, yeah. he grew up, yes. but he is such a cool dude. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, this movie, like, I just, I feel like the production company didn't know what to do with it. They did, they definitely didn't promote it right. And like, I think that's also part of it being everybody's first film. Not only like the the director, the actors, 
Uh, but like the production company, like, you know, and usually you should have somebody that like, you know, they know kind of know what they're doing or know what they want to do with it. Mm -hmm. So it didn't get promoted correctly and it didn't have the, the, the clout behind, you know, it didn't have like the right production company or the clout behind it where, oh, well, we're going to give it an R rating. Um, I'm, I'm curious if, if you were to recommend a horror movie, would you recommend this to people? Uh, only to a select few. I wouldn't be like telling everyone about this. You know, I'd be telling people like I who I think could like handle the or like who would be able to wrap their minds around kind of like the like the artistic or like the like the meta like you know commentary that this movie is making. What do you mean? Do you mean actual horror movie fans or like somebody that's just? In the casual. Oh, okay. You know. Okay. Casual, I, I yes. If the casual person, I'd be, you know, I tailor it. I like, you know, I would, you know, I would have to know like what their tastes are, that or whatever. But horror, uh, well, you know, even some horror people too. I would, uh, I would, uh, I would kind of tailor it to like, you know, what, you know, what their tastes are. You know, if, you know, if they're like, if you know, if they're like you, then if, you know, and I knew that about them. Then uh, yeah, of course I'd be like, yeah, John, you need to watch this movie. It is great. Damn, yeah, many yeah. times. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, uh, yeah, this I wouldn't be just like sh you know shouting it to everybody. Oh man, you gotta go. You know, I wouldn't be going to you know my Sunday school and be like, hey guys, you need to watch this movie. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. My earlier point though, John, was that you know why I think had this movie been like made let's say it was like 1996 or 2006. Mm -hmm. I think there would have been, uh, the, I think the restrictions on it would have, although it, maybe that's not true because when they did the 30th anniversary uh, Blu-ray release that I'm get, I'm going to buy at some point. Cause it, I just, I like, I love this movie so much. Mm -hmm. um, they actually uh, re, they resent the movie to the MPAA and they still gave it an NC-17. <laughs> really? So maybe, maybe it wouldn't have changed anything. But I think that the... I think there would have been a more... I think it would have been received better by the audience. Because I think, you know, the... You know, the... Uh, I think the, the way that people... Like, people are not so opposed to an NC-17 movie. Like, I mean, there, there's a lot of gratuitous shit that's out there nowadays. And this movie is so tame. I mean, it, it's uncomfortable. Don't get me wrong. It's, there's a, there's so many uncomfortable things about the entire fucking film. But as opposed to, like, some of the stuff that's coming out today, like, it's pretty tame. Yeah. I, it's just, it, it, yeah. It fits its age. Uh, if this movie was made today, it would actually be a female serial killer with her, um, uh, like really aggressive sister and the brothers like coming in and he's the abused husband. I, I'd always watch that actually. <laughs> I would too, but I, I mean, the thing was, it's 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 a total role reversal of what we're looking through through 2022 eyes, right? What was that? What was, what was that one movie with uh, Charlize Theron, like where she is playing that female serial killer, uh, um, monster, uh, and like, yeah, uh, monster. It was Arlene Moros. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's something I haven't seen, but I, I'm curious to watch that actually. Yeah, but she she was like so like out there. I, the the way they portrayed her that she was just so, blah, blah, blah. you know, Michael Rooker just played this so subdued. Oh, yeah. that's, that, that, that's, that was the brilliance of his performance. He was so subdued. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like yeah, it was just, it was just like something like simmering, just like just beneath the surface. And even if it was a role reversal, if you had a female or transgender or whoever it was playing a subdued person like this, it would be just as good. It would be just like, but 
I'm gonna I mean, bring up. Not, I mean, in between them being, a, you know, being offended for not using their proper pronouns, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, I loved the gorilla shooting of this movie, where it was oh, just yeah. like out the streets, well, and uh, lights, and everything. This was a um, like a similar to uh, uh, the, there. Were, it was all gorilla filming essentially. Like they had no permits. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, kind of like, you know, similar to like you know the original Gone in sixty seconds and uh, the French Connection. Just no permits, no no nothing. Just like we just got to get these shots in. And it, 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 I can't, and I can't think of any better way that they could have done this. Like there, I even love the Becky shots, like where she's looking for a job. That seemed great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like you know, a hand cam of like filming her walk through the streets of Chicago to find a job. Mm-hmm. That was great. Yeah, yeah. and I think, and I, yeah, you're right. The the lack of budget on this it definitely uh, is a is a plus side uh, for this movie or in this in this type of movie because if they, if they if, you know if they had like the you know what was it if they had like a two million dollar budget and the, you know they had all of like the permits or whatever I don't think it would have like the same no, uh, no, effect no. you know I you know get she... like you know getting like the, the the you know some like a DP and a lighting guy and all this and it, it just wouldn't work. How many times have we found like where a films have had either whether it be by budget or because of censorship restrictions where they've had to be creative and like figure out a different way to do things with with their limitations and the film is so much better because of like the create they have to be creative and think outside the box. Mm-hmm. This whole film is outside the box. You know, it, it's just like that that's what makes it so freaking good. You know, I, I think of movies like Psycho, where, you know, Hitchcock put himself under his own restrictions, where, like, I'm going to do it a uh, million dollars or less, I'm going to do it with my TV crew, and it's considered one of the greatest movies of all time. Yeah. You have Lolita, you know, with, by Stanley Kubrick, who, there are so many, uh, like, uh, the, the content of that movie is fucking horrifying and horrible, but because, obviously, but we're not, we're never given anything explicitly, but we know what's going on, and our imagination does. Yeah, fills work. in the rest. Yeah, whereas, like, the remake of that movie is just, it's so awful. It's just, because everything is just given to you. It's like, ugh, ew, ugh. It's, so, <laughs> it's a terrible movie. And I think this movie fits into that, that thing where it's like, they have the budget restrictions. They had the whole idea of the censors fucking hated it, um, and they never changed it because they because the censors hated it, and they're like, "There's nothing you can change," so they didn't change it. And because of those budget li- limitations they had, we just get this great like, man, I feel like I'm there. I'm with these. I, I'm with these horrible disgusting serial killers i'm getting mold spores in my lungs from their god-awful apartment and the city we get this like we get this time capsule of how disgusting the city looks you know it's it's so horrible it it did feel like like new york in the 70s you know they 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 they, they portrayed new york as the worst place ever and it's a clean city now and go visit more lives is one of those one of those films where it's like it's such a time capsule because it was I, that that area where they filmed like it was on its last legs yeah. and you know, and the the way that um, this film is portrayed in Chicago it's like man, god damn this looks really Whoa. shitty <laughs> yeah no I actually thought because of you know how dilapidated everything was I actually thought that this movie came was made like earlier like closer like closer to like you know still like maybe in the 80s but like kind of closer to like the late 70s yeah it was made in what 86 they didn't come out to 90 yeah yeah right? so it, but it was done it was filmed in the 80s mid 80s right. for sure yeah but, uh, yeah no i i that's all i really had to say about the film like you know it's like i said this is everybody's first film the the actors we did, missed- uh, Although Tom Holes did, did have an uncredited role in Dog Day Afternoon, he was a cop. 
Uh, but other than that, like, yeah, this is his first big break. This is Michael Rooker's big break. Michael Rooker, I don't know why he's not a lead actor. He should be a lead actor, but he's always been kind of, he's become kind of this great supporting actor. Yeah, uh, I'm sure he's fine with that, though. Oh, uh, he is. But I'm just saying, it's like, he has the chops to be a lead. He does. Uh, we missed two scenes, guys. Did uh, we? Yeah. Uh, how old is that? Oh. oh. Yeah, we didn't get to That's that. One. That's oh. one. Ready? So I think the way uh, the way so the metal uh, the brush brush to the neck. Joe Bob Briggs called it a rat tail comb. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah. And that's about that's about accurate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, the so the scene like where Henry comes back after like there there is that scene between him and Becky. Um. And like they, they're, she wants, she wants him. Um, he wants to go buy cigarettes, so. <laughs> yeah, and then he goes buy cigarettes, uh, and Otis takes that time because he is definitely tempted by his sister, which is fucking gross. That's, uh, that's like that, you know, I, I, I guess the character arc of Otis of uh, being the dad, so. Yeah, and he comes back. Here is Otis and his sister, you know, uh, you know, that whole scene. Oh, so bad. <laughs> you, you said like watching the, the, the rape scene or the uh, the family scene was the roughest for you. That was the roughest for me because that seems so real. It was just it's like, like there, there's no scene in this movie where I'm like, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. This is great. Well, Tom, I mean. Tom and what's her name just uh, uh, like they nailed it. It was almost like, oh god, I just want to go watch yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what. Yeah, she yeah. is. Uh, yeah, it feels real because I mean, a part of it, like she actually did like get choked out. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it was because uh, she even said like how because she it was it was her fault because she was breathing the wrong way because this is a very physical scene, obviously. And she was breathing the right way, and the way that she was being held, it caused her to pass out. Oh. And she was like, oh, shit, I missed my cue. It's like, you need to go to the fucking hospital. Like, you, you know, you're, you know, like, oh. I know, you're like, oxygen deprived, right? You need to get your... She actually was out for a couple of minutes. And it's like, you need to go to the fucking hospital. Like, you, 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 you didn't miss your cue. You passed out. Yeah, and it's just like, and so, uh, yeah. It, and I mean, obviously, like it was, she was okay, but it's just like, man, thinking about that, it's like they were really going all out on this film. Oh, the actors, the the, the film crew, right. uh, and that's so we get that scene. Henry walks in, and like because I think there is some care for Becky. I, th I think they do like, you know, obviously she loves Henry. Um, but, and I think there is an attraction that Henry has to her for it. I think the fact that he is probably feeling feelings for the very first time. Uh, I see. I, 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 <laughs> John's like, you fucking wrong, nope. man. Nope. He, he feels nothing. I disagree. Because he goes, you want to listen to the radio? And then she goes to her little diatribe. He goes, I guess I love you too. Want to listen to the radio? Uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a psychopath. He, he has no feeling. I mean, okay, if anything, I'll, if anything, I'll say that he's feeling conflicted. If uh, So... He might have got a boner when she was, like, grinding on him, but that was it. Then why, then why attack Otis? It doesn't matter. Because there's a code. <laughs> I don't like the text. There's a code. Because of the fucking code. Okay. So if, if he loved her, what was she doing? She was playing the guitar on the freaking uh, motel bed, and then he kills her and puts her in a bag. Oh, man. I. I so, no, I, don't get me wrong. I, he kills her at the end. I, I, I get yeah. that. Yeah. But the. Uh, my thing is like, 
there's something between them because there there's this the 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 scene with them playing cards talking about like you know what has happened to them in the past but what does he say about his mom because because she brings up that otis told him or told her that 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 henry killed his mama and oh yeah i killed her with a knife or a gun or a bat or a, well, yeah, because he's killed so many people, he and he does it differently every way. So he does, he does it. He, all his kills are reliving his the his first kill, but with his mom. He has no feeling. <laughs> he's he's shut down since he was a kid, wearing a dress, watching his mom being a prostitute, having sex with other men, and getting beaten. That's real. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't necessarily disagree. I just I feel like there there's something there between them. I don't know what it is. I don't. And I don't know. I'm starting. I'm starting to lean more towards John's point of view. I'm I, just saying, like, but then because she, of the code, that's why he like. She, no, she relates a story about her dad coming into her room and wanting to see her naked when she was what, 13 years old, and it's like fucking disgusting, and it's just like. Henry doesn't give a shit. He didn't give a shit at all. He's like, um... <laughs> oh, the, the one question he has is like, do you don't have a good relationship with your daddy? That's all he says! Yeah, uh, I... you know Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I'm just saying, like, I think there... Because I, I don't understand the motivation of why he attacks Otis... I, I know why he kills him because like well, it's, it's a code. I mean, again, it's it, it's just like you're raping your sister, and it's like okay, that's his that's his line. That's it. That that's his like like uh, no, don't do that. All right, that's his line of sense. He yells at her and says, "Just let me think. Just let me think for a minute." What does he go do? He takes Otis into the bathtub, cuts his head off, and starts cutting off like body parts. God, that was so. The soundtrack on that, fucking great. The soundtrack was awesome. Was great. And when he sounded fantastic, it was like. It was them, like, I think it was uh, the way that they did that was like, I think it was, dude, they, uh, they filmed like cutting like styrofoam. Oh. Yeah, I think that's how they did it. I, I, or that's, or that's what I heard. Like they they were like they found a way like where they were like cutting like styrofoam like or like they like wet the styrofoam or whatever and it just it made that sound it was like oh that is so gross yeah. all, right, all right the sound was great but the like the look on his face it was just like I don't give a fuck this puts yeah. it in the sink and he's like, like let's keep sawing well he's done that before so he doesn't give a shit no I I agree I mean but that's the thing about Henry <laughs> this is what makes the movie so fucked up and so great is that he doesn't give a fuck it's it, it, nobody is gonna change him nobody's gonna make him moral yeah right. yeah it's like yeah so this is like kind of like the anti um, like romantic story of like you know the woman having the the soothing effect on the man and like civilizing him. You know, it's like I think I think had she had like like where she was happy that Otis Otis was dead and she didn't freak out, Henry would have been okay with having her around. That's fine, but I mean that didn't happen. I mean it, it, that's why he knew that it's like she's gonna crack, she's gonna like expose me, she's gotta go. No. <laughs> that's not the look on his face because she was more than complicit. When she was playing the guitar and looking up at him and just very innocently and lovingly, and then the next cutscene is him going into his car, driving down some like fucking rural road, and taking this blue bag that has blood all over it and not giving a fuck and driving away. Uh, yeah. What a way to end a fucking film, by the way. Oh my god! I mean, it was just like the bad guy got right. Because yeah, because uh, usually at the end, you know, the monster's defeated and everyone lives happily ever after. But in this one's like, no, the monster lives and no, the monster you know, is the monster's off to go keep doing what he's doing. The monster's the star. Man, I, I, I said. I think we I think we disagree on a few a few of the points of the film, which is fine. That's great. I I love that. 
But man, what a, what a film and what a great and I love how it ended because it does it, it leaves it open for a sequel apparently. <laughs> <laughs> No, apparently. I just ate it right there. That was like, ugh. No, it's perfect the, ending. The cherry on top. It was just like, I'll eat this cake and enjoy it. Lovely. <laughs> mm-hmm. D- you know, Becky in a bloody bag. That was great. <sighs> but you didn't see her. You didn't hear anything from her. It was just like that one scene. It, it, it It's like the cutscene of the, I guess, the, uh, the, the, the video art mm-hmm. of him looking in the mirror. Yeah. And it's you know, he was like, he was trying, I think right then he was figuring out how he's going to kill her. Maybe. Probably. Probably. That, that's what his dilemma was in that. It's, it's, it's ambiguous. I mean, you look at it and it's like, yeah, maybe. That and that and that scene of him in the mirror—that's actually like a lot of like the 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 poster scenes that we see like, right, in the film, mm-hmm. and like I was like, man, what a that's that scene right there. Like he's art, he knows he's gonna kill her, but how? That's what he's deciding right then in the mirror. But uh, yeah, no, this is a beautiful, beautiful, fucked up film. I love it. I will. I'm. I, I. As soon as we're done recording, I'm watching it again. So. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife wants to watch it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. She said she wants to watch it. So we're we're gonna watch the uh, Joe Bob Briggs uh, Last Drive-In version. Good. Mm. Okay. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, we'll John John McNaughton gives a lot of great insights to this movie, and you just go like, oh yeah, okay, I got that. Yeah, uh, I, and that, that's what I love. I, I, I love that they brought him on the show to have him talk about the film. He's so, that guy is so cool. I like John McNaughton a lot. And uh, the fact that he did a movie like this, and then he did Wild Things, which is a huge, big budget production, which is also equally crazy and fucked up and great. I love that movie. Kevin Bacon Dong in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I uh, what? Yeah, no, we don't ha- uh, we don't give a cool rating like uh, like you do, John, on your show. Like, you know, if I was on your show, I would say like this is a like nine out of ten beers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> get your old brother a beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nine out of ten. Get your old brother a beers. Uh, let me simplify it for you guys. Um, okay, so we do at the beginning of the movie. Does the movie fuck or suck? So sucks means that it's terrible. Fucks means that yeah, go watch it. Mm. Andy, what? does it fuck or suck? Uh, I guess I would have to give it a fuck. Nice, Robert. <laughs> how about you? This is a uh, incestual fuck. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow you went there or or uh you know if you want to go artsy fuck you know, you know where you want to call it depending on like what era you know, part of the country you're in you know it, it's an artsy fuck <laughs> you know you could have just said deliverance fuck oh yeah that works too squeal like a pig <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, this, this movie's awesome. I actually give this a um, seriously artistic fuck, where you feel good about it and you just look at it later down the line and go, "Yeah, that was great." I love how this movie it makes me so uncomfortable, yet it keeps drawing me right back into it. Um, but yeah, no, we usually give it like you know a rating out of five stars. I would say out of those five, I'm going to give this a four and a half. Andy, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, t- I tend to agree. Four and a half. Yeah, I'm going to go four and a half only because is, this is not for everybody. Right. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that, that's that one like half star. It's, like, that, it's not for everybody. Yeah, it, it, it's like... If, you're going to recommend it. it. It's somebody that has seen a couple of horror movies like over the past couple of decades. This one just kind of just 
kicks you straight in the nuts, and it's yeah. but it's fun. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it multiple. Times. I, you, can only, you can only recommend it to people who are dead inside. It scares me how much I love this film. <laughs> I, I love it too. Sorry, Robert. I'm, I'm right there with you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, John, thank you so much for coming on. I know you're a busy dude. Uh, I had so much fun talking to you, man. It's been a blast, guys. Thank you so much, Andy. Absolutely, Robert. John. Yeah. Where, uh, if uh, people were wanting to, you know, find you, where where can they find you? Where where can they listen to you? A cut above or review. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and anywhere you get your podcast. We are not on a YouTube like you guys, but uh, eventually we'll get there. Mm. <laughs> All right, and uh, if you want to reach Andy and me, we are on uh, obviously we're on our YouTube. We do a couple different shows. We do this one. We do a uh, live, live stream every Tuesdays, uh, Nocturnal Transmissions, uh, Tuesdays, 6, six o'clock-ish. Uh, you know, if Andy decides to show up on time. Yeah, uh, yeah I like, that's never my problem. <laughs> uh, and then uh, if, you, you like, if you like uh, classic gaming, I have a few, we have a few uh, shows we've done with, uh, you know, uh, called Up I Up Down. You can watch me play uh, classic video games. Uh, we, if you want to talk to us on, uh, Instagram, it's, uh, uh, Circle of Jerks, is it at Circle of Jerks Podcast for our Instagram? Yeah. And then, uh, on Twitter, we're at Podcast COJ. We also have a, uh, Letterboxd account, also at Podcast COJ. And, yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the episode. John, we're going to have you back on for sure. And, uh. Hey, hey, the last game that we played was it was it Mario Party or Mario Party Three or something yeah, like that? Yeah, we played a uh, Super Mario Party. Oh, okay, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. We had a good time. I didn't play. I was I was watching and going like, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> was yeah, like, it was. Yeah, especially uh, when, yeah, Rob, when your wife was losing. Oh yeah, she she didn't like. <laughs> she didn't like <laughs> We will not bring that back up. Uh, no. <laughs> Shut up, Andy. We can't bring that back up. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you, John, for coming on. Thank, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you on the next episode. <laughs>